Um, Jess, you want to go ahead and introduce yourself just while I get this going? Sure. Hi, guys. Uh, I am Jessica. Um, and Suzanne and I are best friends and uh, the founders of Defy Foods. We have been um, working on launching this company for a couple years now. Um, really kind of just a harebrained idea that came up one night over dinner um, and turned into a reality kind of, I don't know, we weren't sure whether it was gonna become a real thing and then decided to go for it. Um, so here we are now. Yeah, yeah, okay, we can see you guys in the comments now. Hey, Tina, um, it's so good to see all of you. Um, you know, we have been on such a journey with doing everything with starting this food company and it's been so many ups and downs, but it's been so cool that Jess and I have been able to do this together. Um, and when we launched the Kickstarter, we had no idea how things were gonna go. And we are just like so full of gratitude um, and just wanted to thank all of you for making it so successful. We are just like beyond ourselves with how great it's done and the interest and love and support from all of you. Um, and if you're not sure what I'm, I'm talking about, um, we started a food company called Defy Foods. And the very first product that we're launching with is a cheddar cracker. Um, and it's keto certified, only two grams of net carbs per serving. And if you want to check it out, you can go to defyfoods.com backslash Kickstarter. And then you can read all about the crackers. Um, Suzanne, I can't see any comments if they do pop up. So okay, I can see them. So I will, I can, uh... <laughs> you might have to monitor this. Time. <laughs> Go for it. It's fine. All righty. So Jess, I know you had a couple questions that you wanted to talk about um, that some people had submitted and then I'll let you know if you guys want to put any questions in the comments, as soon as they pop up, I'll definitely answer anything that I see in there as well. But we have a couple that some people sent in that we can start with. Yeah. So we've been kind of trying to jot down questions from Facebook and Instagram and in our Kickstarter. Um, so one of the questions is just what do the crackers taste like? Um, and, you know, we can give our opinion. And then we've had um, some people in the keto community that have gotten to try them early on. Um, and we've started getting a lot of their feedback. So we can share that with you too. Um, so they definitely have a cheesy flavor. Um, we kind of always say they're like a keto version of a cheese it And they kind of have a similar look as well, squarish. Um, and some other people have been saying that as well. Definitely like the cheese flavor people are loving. They kind of look like a wheat thin. So people have kind of compared <laughs> them to that. And then the texture is not like a super hard, um, crispy cracker. It has like a crunch to it and it has some crisp, but some people, which I think is really interesting, have compared them to a savory graham cracker. Yeah. Um, so if you imagine like cheese it married with graham cracker, but savory, <laughs> you kind of get the, the picture. Yeah. And the nice thing is, is like, they're totally dippable. So they're not like, they're not fragile enough where you can't dip them. You can still dip them and everything. And the other thing that was really important to us is so many things that are on the, um, on the market right now are like overly cheesy. Like there's tons of like baked cheese. And we didn't want it to be overly cheesy so that you can, you know, dip it in like various things without a super strong cheese flavor. So I think it's a really good balance um, to put on charcuterie boards or you can dip, dip with guacamole. There's like all different options, but we really wanted to make it so it wasn't just like, like full on like cheese. Like there's a lot of like the cheese crisps and stuff like that. It's not like that. It's more like a cracker. Yeah, like texture and taste wise is like a legitimate cracker, like <laughs> not a cheese crisp masquerading as a cracker. Totally. That was like something super important to us because there's a ton of cheese crisps and you can make them on your own too. And yeah. they're good for crunch for sure. Don't get me wrong. But it's like, it's not the same as like a real cracker that you can use for like dips or you, like we've even put like cream cheese and salmon on them or different toppings on the crackers, almost like a little crunchy sandwich. Um, so they're yeah. definitely more cracker-like. 
Yeah. So Natasha said, love, love, love your cookbooks. Thank you. Um, down 30 pounds. Thanks to your book. Uh, that's so amazing. Honestly, that is like, that's why I do what I do. And I think, you know, that's why we started like defy and we, we keep pushing on because we really love this way of eating. And I've seen over the last five years, how many lives it's changing and seeing comments like that just makes me so happy because I know what that struggle is like. And um, it's just, I love this community so much. Um, someone said, savory graham cracker, I'm in. <laughs> um, somebody said, we need a cracker for sure. Um, what's this, a cracker? Hold on, let me see, let me move this screen so I can see. Um, where can I get some? I just got here. Um, yeah, so if you're just joining us, you can go to Defy Foods, it's D-E-F-Y foods.com backslash Kickstarter. And basically we have a Kickstarter going right now because starting a food company, there are lots of expenses and it's just Jess and I, um, you know, two moms kind of going in the food industry and learning as we go. And we, um, we are just like working so hard to really put an effort into change the food industry because we really want both like convenience and quality food. So um, you can definitely pre-order the crackers there now. There's different packages that you can do. Um, and then we're so excited that Kickstarter just funded, but one of the things we wanted to talk about was the stretch goals. Jess, do you wanna go into that? Yeah, I, well, just to back up a little bit, a few people have asked us are not familiar with Kickstarter and have asked like, how do I buy them? And then when we say Kickstarter, they're like, what even is Kickstarter? So we'll just tell you a little bit about Kickstarter and why we chose to do it and then what stretch goals are. Um, so Kickstarter is basically a crowdfunding platform. It's a place where people who have new ideas either for products or digital things, um, all kinds of ideas across every industry, really, from like fashion to technology to food, can launch a product and really like get a gauge on the interest and mm -hmm. get support from their community, um, basically to kind of pre-order a product. And the way that it works is if you you fund your goal, um, then you deliver that product to the people who uh, backed you and pledged. And if you don't hit your goal, everyone gets refunded. So like Suzanne said, it's super exciting that we hit our funding goal, uh, I think two days ago. The days are kind of blurring together. I'm like, <laughs> was know. that yesterday or two days ago? I don't I know. know. Um, so that means like anybody who's already pledged towards them is definitely guaranteed to get the crackers. Like there's no risk in that regard. Yeah. Um, and we chose to do Kickstarter. Like I love Kickstarter. I love discovering new products on Kickstarter. It's really cool to like see the ideas that people are coming up with. Like for the most part, they're not like big corporations who are on Kickstarter. So this is all like independent people who have an idea and a dream yeah. and, you know, don't necessarily have the money or the funding from like investors or things of that sort to bring it to life. And yeah. in the case of the crackers, like, I mean, we kind of had no idea two years ago what we were <laughs> fighting off and it's like insanely expensive. Um, yeah. So we've done like a ton of legwork already up until this point working on them. And then, you know, we launched the Kickstarter really wanting to see like, what's the reaction from people? Like, do they want this? And then to help us really get the last things that we need to do going to be able to deliver them. So um, we have like the bulk ingredients that we're going to be ordering, the packaging, the shipping boxes, the actual manufacturing certifications to be gluten-free, ketogenic certified, kosher. Um, <laughs> so the there's things. like a laundry <laughs> list of many things that we've been working on and that the funding will help for. So beyond meeting our funding goal, like we kind of set that goal because it was sort of the minimum viable amount to deliver on the Kickstarter. Right. And beyond that, we have so many different ideas and visions and flavors and different products that we want to do and different ways to get these to you. Um, you know, our grand vision is to go into retail at some point. So beyond our funding goal, like that's really what uh, people's contributions are going towards. Someone is asking about having the crackers in Australia. 
Yeah, I mean, we definitely, the Kickstarter um, has international delivery and our hope is to continue international delivery when we um, launch on our own website after the Kickstarter. And then as far as getting into retail internationally, it's like a whole nother beast. So we'll take it one step at a time. But like our hope, I mean, we're super happy to have people who are interested all over the world. Yeah, totally. Um, Alexandria said, your book helped me lose over 70 pounds. My goodness. Congratulations. It's so awesome. Um, you were the one who lost 70 pounds, though, but I'm happy that my book helped in any small way. But that's incredible. Congratulations. Um, so uh, Terry said, I love your transparency and willingness to help others in the keto space and keto, keto community. Your cookbooks rock. Thank you so much. You guys are so amazing. We honestly, like Jess and I have just been talking so much about how there is just nothing like the keto community. Like there is just such an amazing support system and we're all rooting for each other. And um, I think even just having this support system where we all kind of know what it's like to struggle with weight or to try to a million different diets or different lifestyle changes to try to lose weight or be healthier or whatever our goals are. And to have that support to some people of people who have been down that road and who understand is like so priceless. And we just love this community so much. Um, Oh, thanks, Cindy. You're so sweet. Cindy said you were my keto hero. Um, Kelly said, I lose weight so slow. How long did it take you to lose your weight? Um, so I lost a hundred pounds in a year. Um, and then the last 20 pounds definitely took me a while to get off. So I think if you have a larger amount of weight to lose, you will lose that more rapidly. And then, you know, that last like 20, 30 pounds definitely is way more challenging. And you know what? It's actually super humbling that I like got to experience that because, I remember, so at my highest weight, I was over 300 pounds. So I lost 120 pounds doing keto. Um, And when people in my life would say to me like, oh man, I need to lose 20 pounds. I was like, what? Like, how could you even complain about needing to lose 20 pounds? Um, And then I got to the point of needing to lose like 20 or 30 pounds. And I was like, oh, okay. Like (laughs) uh, it's harder because you don't have as much, um, you know, to, to lose. And so weight loss does definitely slow down when you have a little bit less to lose. And Jess, actually your story is like the perfect one to follow that up with. Yeah. So I had probably like 30 to 35 pounds to lose. Like after I had my daughter, probably before that, like 20 pounds, like I always kind of hovered around the, like I could lose 10 or 15 pounds mark. Yeah. Um, And for me, like initially, actually the weight came off really quickly. I lost the 35 pounds in six months. Um, And then I went into maintenance mode, like gained a couple pounds back, like give or take within the 10 pound range. But it's like, once you get down to the like smaller numbers, it's like even harder. Yeah. (laughs) It's just like your body is more adjusted to things. You have less to lose. So there's just less to lose. Um, It doesn't move as quickly. But I think just like sticking to it really, like there's totally ups and downs in between that time for sure. And it's super easy to get disillusioned when it's like you're working really hard and you're trying to be like steadfast about things. And then you see the scale go up and down like a couple pounds. I mean, everybody's different and holds on to water weight differently and reacts differently to different foods. Mm -hmm. But I think just like, looking at it more for the long haul and knowing you're doing something good for yourself helps you kind of get through those little like ups and downs and plateaus. And like eventually for me, at least like then the scale would move. Yeah. And sometimes you just have to hide your scale and know (laughs) that the scale is not going to give you all the answers. So, I mean, our weight fluctuates in general, um, especially for women a lot, like different time of the month, like all different types of things can really make your weight fluctuate. Um, And so really I had to work on kind of detaching, like my view of success is not what that number on the scale is. It's like, how do I feel? Like, am I taking care of myself? Am I getting some exercise? Am I drinking enough water? Am I taking some time for myself? Am I working on my mental health? Like, 
it can't, if you tie everything in with what the number on the scale says or the size of your clothing says, you're going to always be on this battle because that's always going to be changing for the rest of your life. So really shifting to taking care of yourself, loving yourself through the process. Because I think for me, why I really wanted to write my second book, Beyond Simply Keto, um, was to really share all the learnings that I learned after losing 120 pounds. Because for me, I always kind of thought like, once I lose this weight, then I'm going to be happy. Then I'm going to love myself. Then I'm going to think that I'm attractive or worthy or fill in the blank with all the things that we tell ourselves. Um, and then I got there and I was like, uh oh, <laughs> like I still have all this work to do um, on repairing like low self-esteem and struggling with like my body image and how I felt about myself. And I really realized that that was such an important element to work on loving yourself through the process, not just the after, um, cause yeah. what is an after anyway? <laughs> um, the scale is like so tricky. Like obviously so tricky. it's a helpful tool to gauge cause you, you know, it's something outside of your body that you can kind of get a gauge on. Yeah. Um, but like, I would even find myself being in a bad mood for the rest of the day after I got on the scale and like thinking that like, yeah. oh, it was going to go down at this point. Like mm -hmm. I did so good yesterday. And then I'm like, I gained a pound and then yeah. it would just like put me in a really bad mood. Yeah. So like, honestly, I feel like I haven't really even gotten to a good place with the scale until recently, which is like five years into doing keto. And yeah. now I kind of, I weigh myself and I just kind of like detach from what it is versus putting so much value into what the scale says. Right. And when I'm like, you know, I don't want to take the risk of putting myself in a negative space today. I just don't weigh myself. Like yeah. now I can just be like, don't even like do it. Who cares? <laughs> like it might've gone up a pound. It might've gone down a pound. It has nothing to do with my value exactly. or how hard I'm working or what I'm doing. And like, I don't want to deal with that today. So I'm going to like, not allow myself to <laughs> not today. Put in that space. Totally. I know the scale, someone said scales are not our friends. I, I totally agree. I think that it's like, it's a good thing to be able to like gauge things every once in a while. But if you really use that as your sole way of judging, if you're doing good or bad, like you will struggle the whole way because as soon as we start obsessing about it and we're like, oh my gosh, the, the scale, the scale, the scale, then our body is like, oh, panic, we're freaking out. Like, let's, let's just like stop and freeze. So you really have to kind of just chill about it. And if the scale is really bothering you, I'm telling you, like when I was in the thick of losing my first hundred pounds, like I told my husband, like, take the scale, hide it in a closet. Like, I don't want to see it. Don't tell me where it is. Um, I just needed to really kind of work on detaching from that. Um, someone said, I see you both are drinking wine. What's acceptable? Um, so mostly you want to stay away from like anything sweet. So dessert wines, any mixers that have sugar in them. Um, and then if you stay with like dry wines, um, we do like reds and whites. And there are some great brands out there that actually have labels on them. Um, so you actually know the amount of carbs that you're drinking. But as long as you're staying away from like dessert wines or anything that tastes sweet, um, you know, and then of course moderation. So normally we just have like one or two glasses. And um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's the whole drinking component. Um, yeah, some actually oh, uh, sent me from DoorDash a bottle of wine to celebrate when yeah. we hit our funding goal. And it was hilarious because my husband and I went to answer the door and I had just gotten out of the shower and had like a towel in my hair. So I'm like, you <laughs> answer. And the guy was like, oh, DoorDash. And we're like, oh, sorry, you have the oh, wrong no. house. Like we didn't order anything. He's like, oh, I'm so sorry. And like left and then came back five minutes later. And he's like, man, I was like, what? <laughs> you're like, oh, wait. He sent me a bottle of my favorite wine. So now we're toasting with each other virtually on this yeah, call. I know. Um, okay, let's see. Someone said the smaller numbers are a struggle for sure. Don't give up. I also suffered from severe sciatica for years. That is really difficult. Um, I tried everything literally nine days into keto diet. My sciatica was gone. Pretty sure it's the anti-inflammatory nature of this way of eating. Uh, yeah. For sure. Um, I actually experienced something similar. I have two herniated discs in my back 
And I, when I was 120 pounds overweight, of course, like the extra weight was difficult on it as well. But I mean, the inflammation in my body went down so drastically, even beyond just losing weight um, from not eating like gluten and like tons of sugar and carbs. And like my back pain is completely gone now. I would have moments where I would like get in a certain position on the couch and I'd be like, how am I going to get up? Because I'm in excruciating pain. And now I haven't had that in like five years. So that is for sure. Um, let's see. What would you alter to get things moving again if you weren't losing some weight? And thank you for answering my question. This is from Kelly. What do you say, Jess? Um, I think the things that I do is I really like kind of go back to the basics. So like, especially in maintenance, there's a lot of times where it's like, I find myself like grabbing a bar, you know, more often than not. A lot of people have, um, you know, like nuts and cheese work differently for them. And some people can say it stalls out their progress. So like whenever I get to that point, I kind of just like look back at the basics, which is like a meat, like some kind of protein mm -hmm. um, and vegetables, some sort of sauce that has fat in it, butter, pesto, um, and just like eat really simple. Yeah, for sure. I think going back to the basics is really important. I think another thing too is not that you have to like measure or track forever, but sometimes I just need to kind of track for a week or two just to kind of see like, is something that I'm eating actually like maybe it's keto friendly, but it's not working with me or am I overeating and I don't realize it because I mean, have you seen those things, Jess, where it's like two spoons of peanut butter and one is like an actual tablespoon and one is like a heaping, like somebody just like scooped it. Yeah. And like when you look at the caloric difference between those two, it's insane. So, you know, why we know that like a calorie doesn't equal a calorie. Um, overall, if you are over consuming calories, um, a lot of stuff can add up fast. So I do like to track for maybe a week or two and just kind of like see like what's sneaking in or what's kind of throwing me off. So that's another yeah. tip. Even like adding heavy cream or half and half to your coffee, like totally. I mean, I just pour it from the carton. Suzanne yeah. pours way more than I do. I'm I like, know. <laughs> you want some coffee with your cream? For uh, sure. But even with like what I put in, then sometimes I'm like, how much am I really putting? Cause even when I'm tracking, I'm like, oh, two tablespoons. And I'm like, eh, yeah, that might be four tablespoons. Like I, maybe yeah. I should try measuring it. Just like you only have to do it once and then you kind of get an idea of like, oh, I'm like way pouring way more than what I thought I was. Totally. And I mean, I know a lot of us are not going out to coffee shops as much as we used to right now with um, being in quarantine um, and coronavirus. But um, another big tip is, I don't know, I, I feel like, maybe it's just me, but I feel like every time I go to Starbucks and I get, especially, I especially notice it when I get iced coffee. Sometimes I've literally gotten iced coffees where they put so much heavy cream in it. It's like white. Yes. Every like, time I get it, it almost leaves like that fatty film in yeah. your mouth because they yeah. put so much in and I'm like, uh, just, just like a dash. Yeah. Your so, dash is going to be like my heavy pour. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and I hate to like waste extra cups, but like what I've started doing, if I know like they do it often is I'll say like, can you put the like cream on the side or like, I'll kind of try to pay attention when they're doing it and be like, Oh, that's good. Thank you so much. Like, you know, um, cause seriously, sometimes I'm like this, like one iced coffee probably is like, you know, 600 calories. Like, yeah. I mean, it's insane. Um, let me see. Somebody said, what are your favorite recipes from your second book? Well, considering that I have Jess here, I don't know if she's up or down on Facebook, but um, I feel pressured to say her coffee cake. <laughs> oh, well, I'm like, I should answer this because I literally cook from the second book like five times a week. Yeah. Like every time I'm like, oh, we should make the mushrooms, the stuffed mushrooms. And I'm like, oh, I want to make the egg roll in a bowl. Yeah. Like, I have like recipes from the second book that are in my weekly rotation. And there's even been weeks where we're like, should we make it twice this week? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I definitely think egg roll in a bowl is one of my all time favorites. I think just because of the ease of it too. And it's delicious. Like 
it's one pan, it's like 15, 20 minutes, it's so easy. Um, so that's definitely a favorite. Um, I'm trying to think, I like the blueberry scones, the blueberry lemon scones a lot. The coffee cake is really good. I'm not just saying that because Jess is here. Um, <laughs> and I, I love the um, strawberry shortcake. Yeah. Because it's so easy and it's really good. Yeah, it's kind of like a spin on like a mug cake and then you just like chop it up and put it in a cup. And that's Olivia's favorite recipe, which it should be the snickerdoodle cookies because her and I probably made like, I don't know, like 25 batches of those before we dialed it in. Like I'm telling you, like keto baking, whew, it, it can be challenging to dial that in. <laughs> Um, oh, mix in here. Mix an egg roll in a bowl is so good. Um, yeah, I remember Suzanne made me the egg roll in a bowl. And like, I'm not a huge fan of Chinese food and I don't really even like egg rolls. And I'm like, yeah, okay, let's try it. And she's like, no, it's really good. I know. Like, Nick even mm -hmm. likes it. <laughs> and you made it. And I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. And then I made it for my husband and he, we like, literally have it every week. He's like, oh yeah, egg roll in a bowl. Well, it's funny because Mick is like not thrilled about eating tons of vegetables. So when I had that like big bag of coleslaw mix and I was like putting it into the pan, like I could see him looking at me like, this is not, like I am not eating this. Um, and then, and then I was like, just try it, just try it. And now he like loves it and wants to make it all the time. Um, Nancy said, Suzanne, I love your cookbook. You are both awesome. Thank you, Nancy. Thanks for joining us. Um, Tara said, we had egg roll in a bowl tonight. Nice. nice. I feel like a lot of people have been making that, especially, I don't know about you guys. You can give a heart or a thumbs up, but I'm so tired of cooking. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Being I, in quarantine, I'm like, please, someone I else cook. I came out of the gate really strong. Like I was like texting Suzanne all these like super elaborate gourmet keto meals that I was making at the beginning of this whole shelter in place <laughs> thing. And yeah. I was like, making multiple like side dishes and I was like whatever if I'm gonna be here I might as well like enjoy having all these things and then a few months into it I was like I'm so burnt out like I, I can't even like meal plan and strategize about how I'm gonna get the food like <laughs> so complicated I know I was talking to Jess actually like I think it was the first week of quarantine and you were like making keto ravioli or something. And you're like, I just spent four hours of my life making ravioli. It was so hard. I mean, it was delicious, but it was like insane. Yeah. And if you guys follow me or know my cookbooks, like I don't do complicated cooking at all. So like, it's funny because we always love going to Jess's house for dinner because she makes all these like super elaborate things. And I'm like, Hey, here's egg roll in a bowl that took me 15 minutes to make. Like we're like, it's kind of like, fun though. Just as good. Yeah. But it's, it's kind of fun because we get to try like the very complex, like haven't you made like keto marshmallows and like keto rice? I mean, she does all kinds of elaborate stuff that I don't have. The I love for. baking. <laughs> I like the like technical precision part of baking. And I'm yeah. kind of like, if I'm going to cook, I don't want it to just be out of necessity. I want to like do something inventive. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, someone had the salt and vinegar wings last night. Let's see. They only, they were drumsticks because the shop didn't have wings. My husband said the only problem was there wasn't enough. <laughs> That's awesome, Kelly. That's always the problem with wings. We're having wings for dinner tonight. I know. Yeah. Wings are so good. Um, that's kind of been one of our family meals that we always do is we order like a bunch of naked wings and celery and ranch and, uh, have like family dinners with that. Um, Sarah said, I'm not good at cooking. Um, Sarah, I feel you. Um, I didn't really grow up cooking a lot. That's why I like me having two cookbooks. There's like irony for days. Um, but I think it kind of hits this sweet spot because I love good tasting food, but I don't love being in the kitchen for hours at a time. So I just try to make like delicious stuff that I love very quick and easy. Um, and I think a lot of people feel the same way. I think some people do love to cook, of course, but um, I definitely like the very easy and quick things because life is so crazy busy as it is, you know? Yeah, um, I think that's like what people really love about both of Suzanne's cookbooks and all of her recipes is like they taste amazing, but they're really simple, which I mean, as much as I like to experiment with like 
elaborate baking and things. Like most of the time, I don't have time for that. My husband's usually the one cooking for us. And I'm like, oh, it's so nice to know that you can like have a good tasting meal on the table in like 15 or 20 minutes. Totally. Yeah. I mean, growing up, I, re I always remember my mom saying that her specialties were canned takeout and microwave. Like that was like, <laughs> I'm like, yep, that's pretty much like what I, what I grew up on. Um, Kelly is saying, can you drink too much green tea? Um, I mean, as long as it doesn't have sweetener in it, um, the only thing is I'm not sure if you're drinking caffeine free or not. Um, you might want to just not overdo it too much on caffeine, but otherwise I don't see any problem with it if there's no sweetener in it. Um, Nancy said making your egg muffins right now for this weekend. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Those are so good for meal prepping, um, just to kind of heat and serve. Oh, my Aunt Lisa's in here. She said, um, what do you eat on days that cooking is out of the question? Jess, you want to start? Yeah, I mean, a lot of times, especially for lunch, like I'm kind of like a leftovers person. So I know not everyone loves leftovers, but I tend to make like an extra portion of dinner and then I eat it the next day for lunch. But if I don't have leftovers and I don't want to cook, like there's so many different just like quick and easy things you can grab like I always have prosciutto and like sliced meat yeah. and cheese around I have like Persian cucumbers that you can just like slice up really quickly um so I'll just kind of like pull together like a meat and cheese and veggies and make like a little picnic style meal out of things yeah, I mean, we pretty much do the same thing. Like I usually will have some lunch meat. And lately I've been, um, if I don't, I mean, if I have lettuce, I'll make like a quick lettuce wrap sandwich. Um, but I saw this thing on Instagram where like somebody put like a pickle spear. Your, Jess doesn't like vinegar. So she's going to like make all kinds of faces when I say this. Um, but they put like a pickle spear and then they like put, and she doesn't like mayonnaise either, <laughs> um, like mayonnaise and like whatever in, and cheese inside of it. And then you like roll it up, um, which I like cause I love pickles. Um, but also one of the things that I like to do is get a rotisserie chicken and then I like take all the meat off of it and then you can save it and then you can put buffalo sauce on it, or you can just do like mayo and celery and make like a quick chicken salad. Um, we do like reheating like sausages, um, tuna salad like I mean just like quick easy grab and go stuff and now that we have the crackers which is awesome like a lot of times we'll do like meat and cheese and crackers which I have been like so sad because I ran out of all my crackers so I have to wait just like all of you guys do <laughs> for the crackers now um, I know I'm like down to the bare minimum of like the bottom of the bag of like 20 bags of rejects basically <laughs> oh, no. from like Runs and things that we did where we're like, no, yeah, that's not it. I know, yeah. Hey, Chris, how are you? Um, Karen said hello. Regards um, from Ch from since Chile. Hey there, Karen. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think uh, we really just wanted to come on and say thank you guys so much for your support and. Um, we really were absolutely blown away by all the love and support with the Kickstarter. Like I said earlier, we had no idea what to expect on multiple levels <laughs> with starting the Kickstarter and launching a food company. Um, and you know, one of the reasons why we named this company Defy is because we're all about really emp empowering people to defy the odds and to exceed the expectations and to challenge yourself to do things that are important to you and that scare you sometimes and to just go ahead and push through that and accomplish your dreams. And um, so there's so many really meaningful things of why we're doing this. And we are so passionate about having the food company change because right now, basically like the advice is like steer clear of all the center aisles because all that stuff is pretty much full of bad ingredients and tons of sugar and not good for you. And in such a busy society, we need healthy options because tons of people are single moms or single dads and they need healthy options that they can just grab and go instead of, you know, what I grew up on, like the fruit by the foot and all those things. Um, so we're really passionate about offering healthier things that are also convenient because like we need them ourselves, which is really what kind of kicked this off. 
Yeah, exactly. I mean, really the idea for this stemmed from us both doing keto, both being like busy working moms and to the prior questions, like you don't always have time to cook, but it's like, you want an easy grab and go snack that still is satisfying that you really like. And it's like, there are some options for sure on keto, but like crackers was definitely something that was missing. Um, And there's so many like good dips that you can have on keto and cheeses and all kinds of things that it's like, okay, well there's celery, there's pork rinds, which like both of those work in a snack, but like there's really nothing that works for that. And that's kind of where we were like, let's start something where we can offer like kind of those like nostalgic things that people like from their childhood, but that are really unhealthy and like make a healthy version of them and make a keto and low carb version. Yeah. And that's kind of where our jumping off point was. Totally. And a lot of times, like when you see brands kind of say like, oh, wow, keto is getting really big. So let's like launch keto products. A lot of times, if you look at the ingredients in them, you can tell that like they know that keto is hot, but they don't necessarily know ingredients that we're not really a big fan of. So we put as much effort into the quality of the ingredients and the items as we did the taste. So, um, you know, we're really hoping to inspire those other companies too, because we really want to kind of work with all different types of brands to say like, Hey, maybe you want to reconsider like this ingredient because we, we want to see this change. Like we want all companies to be successful in offering healthier things because it's good for all of us. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's really great. Uh, we were able to get our, um, crackers ketogenic certified. Um, so they've passed all with flying colors. Um, and someone's asking, can I still pledge? Do you want to tell them about that, Jess? Yeah, for sure. So our Kickstarter is still open. Um, We touched on this a little bit at the beginning that we kind of set a funding goal really centered around like what it would take to produce these crackers for the Kickstarter orders. But we Mm -hmm. have like much bigger dreams and goals beyond just the Kickstarter. Like that is just the jumping off point. Um, And, you know, want to offer these on our own website and in retail someday. So we're really like beyond our funding goal, like that's what's really going to help us continue to grow and innovate and bring new ideas and new ways to purchase the crackers beyond just the Kickstarter. But the Kickstarter has 17 more days um, for our campaign and that whole time um, is open to anybody who's interested in pre-ordering them. Yeah, and so right can... now, um, yeah. our, our estimated delivery date is October for um, some of the early bird packages and some of our stretch goals are also for October. And then the second kind of wave is November, but we're really hoping that we're gonna be able to deliver them sooner than that. Yeah, we're hoping. So yeah, so basically if you wanna pledge, you go to defyfoods.com backslash Kickstarter um, and you can see the link in the comments section. Um, and you can click on that and you can select a package. So we have packages of like three crackers, um, three bags of crackers, um, all the way up to 12. Um, And then we also have different stretch goal packages that we've uh, released that you can have like a one-on-one call with us. Um, We even have like three VIP packages where you can have four one-on-one calls with us, um, either video chat or on the phone. And we're just trying to do all we can to really raise more funds for this because we have big, big dreams and big goals. And um, if you guys can share the Kickstarter with your friends and your family, like we would so appreciate it because it is definitely a big undertaking and we just will take all the support we can get. Um, So thank you guys so much for being willing to share that and to make any pledges. Let's see. What was some other questions that we had queued up, Jess? Um, Let's see. Uh, Chris said, been dieting and exercising myself. Lost 25 pounds since February. You look great. Tell everyone hi for me. Awesome, Chris. Good to see you. Congrats. Um, Yeah, I mean, we've had a handful of people asking 
um, different questions and asking if they can have more kind of one-on-one -on -one calls. This is our second live that we did. We did one on Instagram last week mm -hmm. and like, we really love answering your questions and connecting with you. Um, you know, last week was my first time ever doing an Instagram live and I got off the phone. And I'm like, Suzanne, that was so fun. I loved it. Like, let's do another one. So we kind of launched these different stretch goal packages based on that feedback and really like how much we love it too, to be able to kind of get that time to help people directly. For sure. And if you guys have any other questions, go ahead and drop them in the comments and I'll be sure to get to them. Um, so we talked about how they taste. That was a question that a lot of people had. Um, we talked about the Kickstarter and um, trying to think there was something else that someone asked earlier. I know, I'm trying to look. We answered the ones I had written down. Last time too, I thought that we could go back and see all the questions that we missed. And I'm like, <laughs> Suzanne, where, where's the transcript of everything? And she's I like, know. oh yeah, it doesn't record it. I know. So we missed some of them. So if there's anything that you guys have questions about, if you were on the call last time that we didn't get to, feel you're not bugging us if you ask again. Totally. And if you guys want to follow us on social media, um, on Facebook temporarily, it's just at Defy Food. Um, and then on Instagram, it's at Defy Foods. So if you have any questions, you can always leave questions in the comments there too, and we'll be happy to get to you. Um, there is a giveaway going on on our Instagram right now too. So you can go on there and enter that. Um, and then you can also follow the Kickstarter um, and you can go on to defyfoods.com backslash Kickstarter and then just sign up to follow it and you'll get all the updates and all the information and you can learn all about the crackers, what's in them, what people are saying about them, all to all, everything, all the things. So I think that's it for tonight. Um, thank you guys so much for joining us again, like a heartfelt thank you. Um, we really could not do this without your support. So please continue to share and thank you guys so much for being here tonight. I think we're going to do this pretty much every Thursday for a bit, right? Yeah. We kind of said like, it's our chance to get to like hang out with each other too. Yeah. So we're like, yeah, let's meet up every Thursday. <laughs> I know it's so fun. So, all right, you guys, thank you so much for joining and we will see you guys uh, next week. Thank you. All right. Bye guys.